Hello students, welcome to the science online class. In our previous class, we learnt properties of matter. What are those properties? They are shape, volume, compressibility, diffusion and I said that this matter is made up of molecules and in the molecule itself there are very tiny atoms are present and do you know that there are 119 kinds of atoms present in our surroundings. So, in our previous class we took one example we added sugar to the water as I said sugar is solid substance and water is liquid substance all solid substances they do not dissolve in water the solid substances which do not dissolve in water and we called it as insoluble substances and the solid substance which dissolves in water we called it as soluble substances. Now let us explain another important terms they are for example if you take here sugar water if we add sugar to the water then we will get here sweet water ok. So, sugar it is solid substance, water liquid substance and this is again we will get here liquid substance. The solid substance which dissolves in liquid is called as solute what is that solute the solid substance which dissolves in liquid is called solute and next term, this one the solid which dissolves in liquid. So, this liquid it allows the solid to dissolve in itself. So, we call this liquid as solvent solvent and the combination of solute and solvent it brings us solution it is solution. So, here solute is sugar and solvent is water and solution this is sweet water. So, now here if you take as I said sugar it is in less quantity, but water it is in more quantity and we can explain this solvent and solute as in terms of their quantity also. So, that the substance which are in less quantity in the solution we call them as solutes and the substances which are in high quantity in the solution are called as solvents and the combination of solute and solvent it gives us solution. Here sweet water it is the solution and now as I said that when we add sugar to the water after some time that sugar disappears from the water. So, what could be the reason we already discussed in previous class that sugar particles they occupy the space between the molecules of water ok with that and now so solids they can be dissolved in liquids and some solids they do not dissolve in liquids and now let us take liquids in water. liquids in water you may say that sir water is also liquid what does it mean by liquids in water there are so many different types of liquids present what are they for example oil milk kerosene petrol diesel yes water all these are liquid state of matter only so we will take different liquids and we will add to the water and we will see what will happen though we, we do not have here, but I will tell you what would happen in that case. If you take the oil and if you add oil to the water, oil water, what do you think does this oil mixed up with the water just like sugar? No, it does not mixed up with the water just like sugar and this oil it floats on water oil it floats on water and this type of liquids are called as 
immiscible liquids. What are they? Immiscible liquids. So, oil and water or kerosene plus water or any other oil plus water. If you take in this way, these liquids they do not mix up together. So, we call these liquids as immiscible liquids and now let us take another one. For example, if we add milk to the water, do they both mix up or not? definitely they both mix up together. Here we call these two liquids as miscible liquids. What do we call here? Miscible liquids. So, these are the two important definitions of immiscible liquids and li miscible liquids. Liquids which dissolves in water they are called miscible liquids and liquids which do not dissolve in water they called as immiscible liquids. So, till now we have seen solid that dissolves in water, liquids that dissolves in water and now another state of matter. What is that? That is gaseous state. Do all the gases dissolve in water? Do gases dissolve in water? What are those? For example, if you take oxygen, it dissolves in water, nitrogen, it dissolves in water, carbon dioxide, it also dissolves in water. How can we say that these dissolves in water? Because living thing either on the land or under the water, they need oxygen to survive. So, without oxygen we cannot survive. So, aquatic animals, what is that? aquatic animals. Animals which lives under water are called as aquatic animals. So, these aquatic animals they need oxygen to live. How do they get oxygen? This oxygen dissolves in water and the oxygen that dissolved in water they absorb through the water. So, with that we can say that gases also they dissolve in water. So, finally, we have seen here solids dissolves in water, liquids dissolves in water and gases dissolves in water. I think you may have drink so many times, what is that? Aerated water, what is that? Aerated water and do you know what is this aerated water? Carbon dioxide is mixed up together water with high pressure carbon dioxide plus water that is gives the aerated water. The tingling taste of water that is due to presence of carbon dioxide in the water. Okay. So, this aerated water also gas dissolves in the water and now as we have seen here gases dissolves in water and now let us see here heating and cooling of states of matter. Heating and cooling can we change? one state of matter into another state. For example, can we convert solid into liquid, liquid into gas? Definitely it is possible. The best example is that ice cubes. If we heat ice, it converts into liquid. If we heat that liquid further, again that liquid converts into water vapor. Now, let us write here ice. after heating it converts into water and continuous heating of water will get here water vapor. Water vapor. When water boils observe that the surface of the container top of the surface gases they comes out from the water that gases are nothing but water vapor. So, water has been changed into gaseous state. So, ice this is solid state, water liquid state, water vapor this is gaseous state. 
and again we can convert this water vapor into water also. If water vapor cools, if we cool water vapor then it converts into water and if you further cool water again it converts into ice. Water can be converted into ice easily we know that, but how can this water vapor can be converted into water? There are so many daily life situations we can notice. What are they? For example, if you take out the cool water bottle and immediately on the outer surface of the water bottle water droplets forms. These water droplets what do you think how do they form these water droplets? These water droplets are formed due to water vapor converting into water. Do you know why this water vapor convert, converts into water? Because when it comes into contact with the cool surface then water vapor converts into water. And do you know what do we call this process as? We call this process as condensation. We call this process as condensation. Water vapor changes into water is called condensation. Okay. And now water changes into ice is called freezing, it is freezing. Next ice can be converted into water, in this ice can be converted into water. So, there may be melting, what do we call it as melting. Okay. Ice melts and it becomes water and now if we heat water further it changes into water vapor. What do we call this process? There are two possibilities in this situation water can be converted into water vapor. The first possibility is that when we heat the water continuously water boils and it changes into water vapor and second possibility. In the second possibility we need not to boil the water at every temperature either it is 1 degree Celsius or 25 degree Celsius or 30 degree Celsius or at our room temperature water changes into water vapor automatically and we call this process as evaporation that is evaporation. evaporation. But as I said that there is another possibility also that is boiling of water. Okay. So, we can say here boiling and evaporation due to these two processes water can be converted into water vapor. Okay. So, we have seen that the different states of the water and now let us see here chemical change and physical change. Already here very pure example for the physical change. What is the meaning of physical change? Physical change means there will be a change in the state of uh, state of matter, size and shape that is it. A new substance does not form in the physical change. In this ice is converting here water. So, here the state of matter has been changed water again converted into water vapor. So, again the state of matter has been changed, but it is possible to get the original composition again. I can get again water from water vapor, I can get again ice from water. So, this change is called as physical change, a change in which we can get original composition again from the substance, but chemical change is completely different to the physical change. What does it mean by chemical change? In the chemical change a new substance forms and we cannot get original composition again from that substance. Can we take some examples? Definitely. For example, milk changes into curd, milk changes into curd. Can we get milk from the curd again? No, it is not possible. So, this change is chemical change and not only this burning paper, 
burning paper it changes into ash can we get paper again from the ash no it is also not possible so this is also chemical change in the chemical change a new substance forms with different properties but in the physical change though a substance forms we can get original composition again from that substance okay in the physical change there will be a change in the state of matter size and shape and in the in the chemical change there will be a change in the smell there will be a new uh, sound produced while during the chemical change just like burning fire crackers when we burn the fire crackers it produces sound what type of change it is it is chemical change okay so these are physical and chemical changes so now let's see here some multiple choice questions blanks and now true or false we'll solve this with this we'll finish the lesson the first one matter is made of tiny invisible particles called matter is made up of very tiny invisible what is the meaning of invisible invisible visible means which can be seen invisible means which cannot be seen we cannot see that so what is that answer here here three options are present atoms molecules compounds you may think that may be atoms but here matter is made up of molecules and this molecules further classified are divided into atoms okay this molecules also have atoms atom is the smallest unit of the substance okay so matter is made up of molecules and molecules also we cannot see so here the answer is molecules now the second one this has a definite shape and definite volume what is that definite shape and definite volume for example if you take gas gas it uh, it neither has a definite shape nor definite volume if you take liquids okay liquids have definite volume but it does not have any definite shape but if you take the solids solids have definite shape and definite volume they both have so here solid is the correct answer now third one a solid that dissolves in a liquid is called as i already take the example as sugar plus water sugar dissolves in water a solid that dissolves in liquid and what do we call this solid that is solute okay and the answer is here solute which one is an immiscible liquid immiscible liquid so it does not dissolve in water what are these here spirit spirit it mixes up together with the water spirit dissolves in water second one alcohol alcohol also dissolves in water and drunkards they mix water with the alcohol so because it, these two are miscible liquids they can be alcohol can be dissolved in water third option is oil so whatever the oil you take they float on water oils they do not dissolve in water so here the answer is oil next fifth one a physical change is a change in a physical change is a change in state of matter size and shape of the matter so here the answer is we have first option size and shape this is correct second option state of matter this is also correct so the answer is both and option c sixth one chemical changes are chemical changes are irreversible can be reverse can we reverse this we cannot reverse this process we cannot get milk from the curd so chemical changes are irreversible physical changes are reversible we can get again water water from the water vapor we can get ice from the water so this change is physical change and this change is chemical change so chemical changes are irreversible changes now the next one is true or false the first one 
things in the world whether living or non living are made up of matter yes whether they are living or non living plants are they living things or non living things plants are living things how can we say that whether a living thing or non living thing any object or any person for example if we take human beings we can walk we can move from one place to another place and we have so many systems present in our body circulatory system yes so nervous system muscular system digestive system but all these are not present in plants but still respiratory system is present they breathe in oxygen they breathe out and we can see reproduction also in the plants through their different parts leaves seeds branches roots so though some properties are not satisfied by the plants but still they are living things because they can reproduce and they have respiratory they can breathe in and they breathe out they breathe in carbon dioxide plants breathe out oxygen and we use that oxygen okay now here what is the answer so either they are living things or non living things and if you take this chalk piece as i said chalk piece is a non living thing because it cannot move itself okay so this is a non living thing and it does not have any systems present in its so this is non living thing though it is a non living thing it is made up of matter and matter is made up of molecules matter consists of contains of molecules so now here the answer is true the statement is correct statement second one atoms are the building blocks of matter s atoms are they are the building blocks of matter so due to the atoms matter exist if there are no atoms matter does not exist next third one a gas has a definite shape or volume he is asking anyone a gas has definite shape or volume no it has neither definite shape nor definite volume now let's see the fourth one immiscible liquids forms a separate layer float on the surface of water as i already said that if we take oil and water okay oil water so this oil floats on water it has a separate layer on the water so these two liquids are immiscible liquids so this correct this statement is correct now fifth one the tingling taste in aerated drinks is because of carbon dioxide as yes. due to the presence of carbon dioxide in the water and this carbon dioxide is mixed up with the water with in the presence of high pressure high pressure so with that that water gets a tingling taste next sixth one in a chemical change a new substance with new properties is formed as yes. in chemical change a new substance forms which is which is irreversible change and that new substance also have new properties not from the previous substance but physical change is it is completely different to the chemical change so with this we have finished our lesson let's recall what we have learned in this class the first one we have seen that in our surroundings there are so many different types of objects i mean living things and non living things present either they are living things or non living things they are made up of matter and this matter contains molecules and this molecules contains atoms and we cannot see molecules directly with our naked eyes okay and uh, based on the arrangement of the molecules and difference in the molecules these objects or materials material uh, matter exist in three states what are those solid liquid and gases and these three states of matter they have different properties what are those properties for example shape volume compressibility diffusion and then after we have seen that solids in liquids soluble substances insoluble substances and then after miscible liquids immiscible liquids and then after 
how gases they can be dissolved in water and the some examples also oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide they can be dissolved in water. And then after we have seen how to change the state of matter solid to liquid, liquid to gas, gas to liquid, liquid to solid in this way. And we have seen that condensation process and boiling and evaporation and melting and freezing. And after that we have seen the difference between the physical change and chemical change and we took some examples also. So, with this we have finished our lesson. So, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I will see you again with another interesting lesson in our next session. So, till then bye. Thank you.